Hi everyone, this is Dennis from Prep Matter. Having conducted thousands of case interviews, I've noticed that many people make simple mistakes in their final recommendation. So to address this, I've decided to share everything you need to know to perfect your case conclusion. Let's get started. For those who are not familiar with the case interview structure, at the end of the case study, you are typically asked to provide a summary of the analysis you've done in your final recommendation. This is very similar to the executive summary pages we have in consulting. We typically condense a 100 plus page slide deck into a single page, summarizing the key findings and the final recommendation. Your case conclusion should resemble an elevator pitch, a term we use frequently in consulting. Imagine being in an elevator with the CEO and being asked about a project you've been working on. How would you summarize your findings succinctly? I found myself in this situation many times at BCG. Remember, you don't have more than a minute in the elevator, and the same applies to case studies. Given the time constraints, try not to spend more than a minute to a minute and a half on your final recommendation. So how can we ensure you deliver a succinct recommendation? First, take time. Before you present your recommendation, take 30 seconds to jot it down. This strategy prevents improvisation, saving time, and allowing you to communicate with clarity and confidence. Since you will have all the key information written down, you won't need to flip through your notes to find the key figures during your recommendation. See how I asked for some time in one of the case studies. That's definitely great to know. If that's okay with you, then I'd like to take a short moment and then I'd like to conclude the case. Yeah, please do. All right, thank you. The next thing you should do is take effective notes. During the case study, make a note of the key insights and figures you will need for your conclusion. Develop a habit of enclosing them in a box or marking them with a star for quick reference later. You also need to cut the chase. I often see candidates recounting the case prompt before sharing their final recommendation. Using our dad's gym case as an example, Imagine if before sharing my final recommendation, I said something like, the client that's gym has approached us to assess the impact of their competitor, Walfe's recent entry into their market with the two new gyms and to evaluate the potential impact on their business and so on. You can see that reminding the interviewer of the initial question doesn't add a lot of value and it wastes 10 to 15 seconds. It's better to dive straight into your conclusion. Here's an instance where I went straight to the conclusion without revising the initial case prompt. Fantastic. Based on our analysis, I would tell the client the following. First of all, it seems that there are two major factors behind this profitability decline of eight percentage points. First of all, the overall market is shrinking in the past two years. And as a result, uh, there is now less. You also need to be result oriented. Many candidates are too process oriented in their final conclusion. To illustrate, let's return to the Dastream case. A conclusion like, today we first explored the client's customer preferences, then evaluated whether the client could satisfy these needs, followed by an analysis of the potential threats from the new competitor, and so on. It is quite lengthy and not to the point. Next, keep risks and next steps brief. Focus 80% of your conclusion on the core recommendation and its justification. Allocate the remaining 20% to discussing risks and next steps. Even if you've addressed several risks before the recommendation, try to highlight only one or two in your conclusion to avoid overshadowing your core recommendation. Now that we've discussed how to keep your recommendation concise, let's delve into the structural aspect of your conclusion. Consider two distinct case types. The first deals with specific issues that need a diagnosis, like competitor response, profitability, and operations cases. For those case types, start your recommendation with your diagnosis. For a competitive response strategy case, first explain the potential impact and the reasons behind it, and then move on to the response strategies. In a profitability case, outline the root causes of the profitability drop before discussing recovery strategies. For operations cases, describe why there might be operational inefficiencies before sharing solutions. Always end with a quick mention of risks and next steps. See how I implemented this structure in a competitive response case conclusion. Based on our analysis, we would conclude that, first of all, the threat isn't as significant as the client initially thought, because right now, 
the only area that WellFit can perform better compared to us is our price point. And it is something that only young lifters care about and they only make up around 10% of our revenues. And hence, even if you lose all of them, you're not going to have a lot of impact to the business. Having said that, in order to combat this issue, as well as even further increase our market share, we need to focus on two dimensions that the rest of the customers value a lot about. And these are equipment and technology, as well as community. For us to address those, we came up with one initiative per area. In terms of the equipment and technology, we need to leverage technology, personal health data, and integrate it with our solution so that we will be able to do more customized workout plans, meal plans for those subscribers. And second, in terms of the community, we need to find ways to introduce webinars, more online courses to ensure that there's more collaboration and communication amongst different subscriber groups. And hopefully by doing these, we should be able to retain our current market share, if not even increase, because this time we're going to increase our differentiators, our gap between us as well as the well-fit. In, so, in terms of the risks, we realize that actually we should be able to implement those, those solutions quite timely, and hence we shouldn't worry too much about the timeline. So this would conclude the case. Thank you. The second category of case studies doesn't necessarily focus on diagnostic elements. This encompasses most of the market entry, investment, M&A, product launch, growth strategy, pricing, and public sector cases. Begin your conclusion with the final recommendation, backed by three supporting reasons. Conclude with a brief overview of potential risks and next steps. Here's how Doug concluded a product launch case. I would like to recommend the client go ahead with this investment because of the following three reasons. First of all, this investment sounds profitable because it will generate 45 million additional profit while our objective is 30 million profit in the total of next five years. The second reason is that if implemented successfully, which sounds feasible, this investment can enhance our capabilities as a hospital to further expand in other areas to provide more services in the future. And the third reason is that as we just covered, there is no significant risk associated to this investment. So it looks pretty sound in that perspective as well. Going forward, I recommend the client to start building their labs and then starting the marketing of the services. I hope these examples have clarified the structure for both case types. Before we wrap up, I'd like to share one last tip to enhance the quality of your final recommendation. In case studies, you and the interviewer are colleagues discussing a client's business problem. Therefore, the client is referred to as a third party, and you should consistently use terms like the client, they, or their name throughout the case study. A common mistake candidates make is beginning their final recommendation with Dear Mr. CEO, and directly addressing the client as you. This approach can come across as somewhat immature and inconsistent with the tone of the case discussion. To ensure a professional and consistent conclusion to the case study, always refer to the client as the client, they, or by using their name. All right, this brings us to the end of the video. I highly suggest checking out our Get You Offer course, which has plenty of proprietary case studies and full-length case interview videos, so that you can practice your final conclusion. I'll provide the link below. If you found value in today's video, please give us a like as well. We're gonna see you in the next one. Take care.